Over the years, the Conservation Engineering Program at the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries has worked to solve bycatch problems in trawl fisheries. These problems are complex due to changing regulations, variations in fish behavior and migrations, and skill differences among fishermen. An array of solutions is required. This video will look at a variety of gear changes that have been tested to reduce the bycatch of scup and other species when squid fishing in Nantucket Sound. This is an ideal testing ground for trawl and fish behavior studies because these fishing grounds are near shore in relatively shallow waters. Information gained through work in Nantucket Sound may be applied to the larger year-round offshore fishery in the Mid-Atlantic region. Massachusetts hosts a small-scale trawl fishery for long fin squid in Nantucket Sound each spring. The fishery comprises only a fraction of the U.S. landings, with most landings coming from the offshore fishery. However, for local fishermen, wholesale seafood dealers and processors, the five-week spring fishery is a critical part of their annual incomes. Trawlers working both inshore and offshore squid trawl fisheries encounter scup in variable quantities and sizes. Undersized scup must be discarded. Any legal size scup caught in excess of trip limits must also be discarded. Trip limits vary by time and place. For example, trip limits range from 10,000 pounds at times in the offshore fishery to zero pounds once annual or seasonal quotas are reached. There are at least three different problems with scup bycatch in the squid fishery. They are, one, the catch of undersized individuals, two, the general catch of legal fish can fill quarterly quotas rather quickly, and three, the entering of large schools of fish at one time into the trawl inhibits normal escapement through the meshes. More time is needed for mesh selection. These different problems call for very different management solutions. These solutions can involve a variety of trawl gear modifications depending on area fished, time of year, or quota limitations. In order to observe fish reactions to trawl nets, underwater cameras were used to record fish behavior in various parts of a trawl net. This footage revealed some interesting behavioral differences between squid and scup. Squid react to an approaching trawl in the same manner as whiting, another species that is targeted with small mesh nets. Both squid and whiting will rise up from the seafloor as the net approaches. Conversely, video footage shows scup like to stay lower in the mouth of the trawl. Knowing this information has led to ideas for net modifications that will exploit this behavior to cleanly target squid. The first trawl modification was with a separator net. A separator trawl looks similar to a traditional net except for the addition of a horizontal panel of webbing. This panel is sewn into the body of the trawl and leads fish into two extra cod ends. The concept behind using this type of separator trawl is to reveal behavioral differences between fish species that enter the net at different heights. Fish entering in the lower part of the net will be found in the lower cod end. Conversely, fish entering higher in the net will be found in the upper cod end. Knowing which part of the trawl fish enter can lead to other trawl modifications preventing certain species from being caught. One attempt compared catch information from a raised foot rope trawl to the separator trawl. Comparing catches from a raised foot rope trawl to catches from the separator trawl might determine that similar results can be obtained from the raised foot rope trawl. The raised foot rope trawl uses the same basic principle as a separator trawl by exploiting behavioral differences between fish species. This is accomplished by raising the whole net off the bottom, thus allowing fish that stay low to escape under the net. The squid raised foot rope trawl is based on the same design used in the whiting fishery. When targeting squid, it was concluded that the raised foot rope trawl was as effective at reducing the bycatch of bottom tending marine species as with a separator trawl. One fisherman on his own accord uses a sweepless version of the raised foot rope trawl for squid. 
He adopted it after realizing the bycatch of scup and other marine species can be reduced by using the design. He saw his squid catches were cleaner and easier to sort. The sweepless raised foot rope trawl is believed to be an improvement over the standard design because it is less likely to become entangled in lost fishing gear. It is a simple and easy design to build and enforce and has less bottom contact with the seabed. In 1999, gear modifications focused on large square mesh panels or windows in the extension of a modified raised foot rope trawl. The square mesh windows were combined with the use of a tarp covering a section of the extension just aft of the window. The tarp created a darkened tunnel effect which would hopefully scare scup through the square mesh. Okay. Further testing of these modifications, the raised foot rope trawl, the sweepless net, and square mesh windows occurred in June of 2000. Size selectivity of scup was successful when a five and a half inch square mesh window was used in the extension, and this is now part of regulations in the mid-Atlantic fishery in the gear restricted areas. Although initial results of tests with a sweepless raised foot rope trawl and square mesh windows in the extension looked promising, occasionally problems with scup still occurred when large aggregations of fish were in the tow area. If large schools of scup are in the tow area, the sweepless trawl can become overwhelmed. This is probably because fish behavior is being altered and the whole school physically cannot escape below the net when they congregate in these large schools. Therefore, the only way a trawl net can be prevented from capturing large schools might be through use of a physical barrier within the net. By placing a grid in the extension of a trawl coupled with escape holes fitted on either side, further reduces the bycatch of finfish and other marine species. The idea behind using a grid is that fish of a certain size pass through it, and it has been used before in other small mesh fisheries. An example seen here is the Nordmoor grate that is used to selectively harvest northern shrimp in the Gulf of Maine and elsewhere. Critics of the Nordmoor grate say it will work only in certain areas, and its rigid design makes the grate difficult to effectively use. Therefore, some fishermen are not willing to use it when squid fishing. A new design is needed to allow a net to easily wind up on the net drum of a fishing boat during hauling. Also, the grid material has to be readily available and relatively inexpensive to purchase and build. Two grids were built, one from plastic rings, the other from mesh webbing, taking into account diameter opening, cost, and flexibility. Both types were sewn into the extension of a trawl and had escape holes or fish eyes on both the starboard and port sides of the extension. Testing of the grids was conducted during the summer and fall of 2001 with two separate vessels. Escape holes placed laterally to both sides of the grid allowed fish which did not pass through the webbing or plastic rings to freely go into two extra cod ends. This design created three separate cod ends, a port, middle, and starboard. The middle one was for the squid and anything small enough to pass through the grid. The other two contained bycatch species and any lost squid. By having all the catch enumerated, grid effectiveness was established. This experiment demonstrated that the bycatch of scup and other marine species was dramatically reduced with a small loss of squid. However, small sized scup, less than 10 centimeters in fork length, pass through the grid openings. Therefore, when fish of this size are encountered, neither grid will be able to exclude them from the catch. In the future, marine fisheries personnel wish to test these flexible grids during the entire length of a squid season, provided outside funding can be obtained. This way, a better understanding of the grid's effectiveness will be determined. As future work and ideas are being developed, let us recap what has been presented thus far. One, scup catches are highly variable in season and area. Two, large schools of scup 
can overwhelm the bycatch reduction feature of any net. 3. Squid react to an approaching trawl by rising up whereas scup remain lower in the trawl mouth. 4. A raised foot rope trawl can reduce scup catch as well as most other bycatch species that reside close to the substrate. And 5. Certain gear modifications can reduce scup regulatory discards. One example seen here is the 5.5 inch square mesh escape window, which allows all but the largest scup to escape and is required in the federally mandated Mid Atlantic gear restricted areas. Another example is a flexible grid, which eliminates nearly all scup greater than 10 centimeters in fork length. The work accomplished so far has been able to address the problem of limiting the general catch of scup. However, problems with the catch of undersized individuals may not be overcome through gear modifications. Flexible grids may prove as a practical solution to eliminate large schools of fish from being retained by the net, but require more testing. Marine fisheries, in cooperation with squid fishermen, will continue to pursue simple and practical solutions to prevent the unnecessary discard of scup and other species. Innovation and adoption of new approaches by those who work on the water will be essential to finding those solutions.